continue to work with a few of our existing industries on some expansions that they're, they're working through. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to make some announcements here soon with those. And we also work on six active projects um, that have come to, us, come to us through the state and um, kind of be a following on that good stuff as well. Um, for existing industry visits, you can see there, um, that with ADM and ADB, Lettuce, Arubulus, Lowe's, and Dillard's RDC and Smith Drug this month. Um, and with Lowe's, Dillard's, and Smith Drug, I'll skip down kind of a little bit to the uh, VSU Logistics and Supply Chain Management class tours. We toured um, those three facilities on September the 30th. Uh, there was about 20 students and three professors that came along, and it was a uh, very good trip. We went from 1 o'clock to about 5 o'clock that Friday, so we spent about an hour and a half at each facility so they could see um, you know, what goes on and what goes into logistics and supply chain so they could ask questions. Uh, they were very engaged, and it was a very entertaining tour, so we were glad to be a part of it and help, help line that up. Um, moving back up, uh, Next Tuesday, October 25th, we have our next uh, industry or brat luncheon. Uh, it's scheduled from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And this luncheon, we're going to have a panel discussion with some local leadership. So we're going to have the mayor, uh, the chairman, uh, and the city and county managers there to kind of discuss what's going on in the community so our existing industries can, can hear uh, what's going on that may benefit them or have some kind of effect on what's going on. So uh, we're really excited about it. We have about 10 industries signed up so far, so we're going to get on the phone and try to drum up some more interest with that here this week. Um, so we're excited about that one. Uh, and then Megan already mentioned that National Manufacturing Day, but we did go visit four of our existing industries um, during that week. Uh, we visited uh, ADM, ADV, Letica, and Rubulus. Uh, took the mixed truck out there and all their employees were extremely grateful. It was a good time to by all. And, um, it was just fun getting to interact with the employees. You know, you know, when you go do the industry visits, you don't know, have to deal with the plant manager or HR and dealing with talking with the actual employees was pretty pretty cool to see. So they were very grateful and were generous and thanked us for, for doing for what we did. Um, Moving on to the Fossil Tire expansion. So Fossil Tire is, is came to us, they want to, I guess originally when they started the project there was going to be two or three different phases for it. So now they're kind of into phase two of the project. So what they want to do now is uh, build a tire warehouse basically, so a warehouse that they can store on their new tires for the different uh, vehicles that they service there. This is where they want to put it. It's going to be an 8,000 square foot warehouse. Um, that's just an, an expanded version there. So this is kind of what the inside is going to look like. So there will be an office space um, and tires just stacked in the warehouse. Um, now this is kind of where he wants us to look at this. So this is the east side. So this is going to be facing St. Augustine Road. So when you're driving down St. Augustine, this is the part of the building you're going to be seeing. Um, but it's all metal siding, so it doesn't really meet the covenant. So I wanted to show this to you guys just to kind of get your input. Um, he, he explained to me that, you know, they put all that landscape in there to make it kind of block out some of the tractor trailers and tires or whatever they would have in the parking lot. Um, so he's trying to sell us on the idea of leaving it like that. <laughs> but You know, I re remember at the inception of this project, we had some pretty serious discussion about whether or not the vegetation would be sufficient. Uh, there's also some discussion about the facing or the exterior siding of the building, as I recall. I don't have those notes. And there is something in the covenant, and I think we're driven to approve the project based upon the aesthetics on 
the St. Augustine Road sign. That's just stuck in my head. So how is it that they anticipate we are going to deal with this so that they can proceed on with this well, expansion? I, I think I think from, from my perspective, and I, and I told him it's likely probably not going to work. <laughs> so, I mean, I think if we... Before you go too much further, yes. excuse me, what are the covenants? What, what is not meeting the covenants? It's the, a type of siding, I know, but what's required? Uh, it says, I got it right here, it says, it says, all buildings must be constructed with an exterior wall consisting of tilt wall concrete, panel or masonry, brick, stone, or textured concrete block to a minimum of 16 feet with an appropriately covered corresponding masonry stuff that would drive it to texture, surface, metal material above the 16 foot roof line. All exterior walls at the front along St. Augustine Road and Lord Jackson Road must be constructed with an exterior wall consulting consisting of a tilt wall concrete panel with the masonry. So. And I, you know, just to kind of go, um, you know, we started developing these parts right about the time that I got here. And, you know, I know the boards um, always wanted to be consistent and that we have enough of industrial, we have enough industrial parts to have metal sided buildings. And I know that at that time, the board no longer, you know, they wanted to see nicer buildings in the industrial parks. Um, so I'll, you know, present that you know, to y'all. And that was kind of where y'all were. Added. And I would, my recommendation is I think that, you know, we should see if there's some other things that we can do with them to, to look at this. To make it more static. Think, thinking back to, to that period of time um, and, and looking around the, the country, looking around, uh, and, and a lot of buildings were being put up um, as tilt buildings. Um, the, there were, in that same period, there were a lot of buildings uh, built with uh, pre-stressed concrete, like, uh, it's a big T-frame, is, is what it amounts to. Um, and, and something happened, um, like about two years before this parking garage was made over here. If you go back to when the parking garages were made at VSU, all of that was pre-stressed concrete that was trucked down here from Atlanta, from a great big factory. Um, and there, there were other factories around the, 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 the state. When they built this parking garage over here, it's not precast, it's formed and laid. It's because that way became much more expensive. Well, back when we were doing that, that tilt wall stuff, um, it, was, it was much more economic than it is now. It's gotten very expensive to do it that way, very expensive. And so that becomes a problem. You know, you know, it's great if you've got a, an industrial park and all of those are those, those tip-up buildings. I mean, they are nice looking. Um, but it becomes an economic problem. It, it does. I guess the fundamental question is whether or not we want to revise the covenant and impact the aesthetics of the park in general. Um, it's not as though nobody knew that <laughs> this was not tolerable. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think they knew they were just want to see what we would say and get our input on it. I mean, I would recommend at least doing the St. Augustine frontage to match what they currently have, and then the rest could be. Did you go back to that first slide that had the existing building and uh, is the blue area area where you're saying this would Yes, this where they would go around about there. I'm not hundred percent exactly sure, but I know they want it in that area. Mm -hmm. So it's right on the same. It would look a lot more cohesive if it matched what yes. their existing building was. Well and if you go down and, and look at the that, that other building um, no. it, it's dressed up very nicely, but it's essentially a metal building. Right. But it's dressed up very nicely, and it was done on purpose, um, and it was done for economic reasons. But it's a lot different than just a, a tent building. Yeah. Well, I think, so we're going to have to, you know, 
and what you're saying is you'd like for us to go back and we'll make some proposals to them and we'll come back and see what additional drawings they can come up with. And once we kind of let him know what we need, he can come back with a price. He didn't have an overall price for the project or anything like that. But he did say he'd hire three or five more folks with this. I've got another question about what this building is. Um, if, if I look at the setback of those other buildings, I mean, this is just yeah, pretty just, close to the fence. I just threw it up there. I okay, guess. all right. Yeah. So that's you. Not, okay. not, yeah. not too scaled. Yeah, but, okay. Thank you. I do think we need to have a fundamental discussion on what we expect for future development with the tilt wall construction being, as Jerry said, as expensive as it is. Um, well, now what they have now is just concrete block. Concrete block. That's painted, and then there's some metal above that. So. And you know, back when we did these projects, that was one of the ways that we chose to go to help with the cost. Just like what Jerry said, is that we understood that the tilt wall was going to be expensive, so we came up with ways that we could make it aesthetically pleasing um, at a much more affordable cost. Very similar to kind of how we handled it in the work. So, um, you, but you're you're right. We should go back and we can look at those when we visit. The Dupont built very similar. Mm -hmm. And moving on to the Miller Business Park mailbox, I um, so y'all 